Welcome to our final SEC early prediction show. It's a sad ending to an amazing series. I've had a ton of fun doing these. All SEC teams, and the best one right now is a team that I didn't even expect. The video that did the best was Arkansas, so shout out to all you Hogs fans out there if you're watching this. But we're finishing up with Vanderbilt, and I just watched my Gamecocks play Vanderbilt in baseball. We beat them in the Sunday series, but Vanderbilt fans, you're a baseball school. And... Jack later threw a no-hitter on Saturday, and you won the series. So, Vanderbilt's a baseball school. There's no other way to put it. I may come across as a bit harsh against their football program. They're going through a coaching change and everything. But I'm going to try to be as fair as possible going into this Vanderbilt video because we all know this isn't a massive football school. This has been kind of labeled as the doormat school in the SEC the last couple years, and it has been. Vanderbilt's had a real, real struggle with this football program, but in today's video, we are going to be going over Vanderbilt in 2021. We're going to be going through their schedule, going to be going through recruits that they brought in, how their team's looking this year, and then going through the final piece, which is the most exciting piece of all these videos, wins, toss-ups, and losses, and then projected records for the Vanderbilt Commodores for the rest of the season. So sit back, relax. If you're a Commodores fan, enjoy this video. If you're any fan of any team, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, Hit the like button down below and subscribe to this channel for way more college football content, especially SEC content, because even though this is the last of the early season predictions, I still got tons of SEC content planned, so you are not going to want to miss out. Let's start off by checking out Vanderbilt, or first off, let's talk about Vanderbilt's season last year. They go in with Derek Mason, and the team goes winless. They don't win a single game all season. They go 0-10. It was a really rough season. Their closest game was against Kentucky. They almost beat Kentucky. I think it was like a 38-35 to 35 star, uh, game in Lexington. And then you also had the Texas A&M game, which Vanderbilt only lost by five to uh, Texas A&M, who was the fourth best team in all of college football at the beginning of the season. It's crazy to think back that far, but Vanderbilt had their struggles last season. They fired Derek Mason, bringing Clark Lee as their new head coach, and that's who they're going with in this 2021 season for Vanderbilt. So they're switching things up in this program. Things are moving, lots of stuff happening. How is Vanderbilt going to be able to do this season? So let's take a look at their 2021 schedule. Starting off on September the 4th, they take on Eastern Tennessee State. Um, on September 4th, then they go to Colorado State to take on the Rams on September 11th. Then they come back home for a game against Stanford, a big Power 5 game there against Stanford on the 18th. Then you go uh, stay home against Georgia on the 25th. You're at home versus UConn on October the 2nd. Then you start a two-game road trip, first on October the 9th against the Florida Gators, and then October 16th against my South Carolina Gamecocks. Then you come back home for a pretty good home stretch. You got on the 23rd, you got Mississippi State. On the 30th, you got Mizzou. On the 6th, you got a bye. On the 13th, you got Kentucky. And then you go finish up the season a two-game away stretch on November the 20th against the Ole Miss Rebels in Oxford, Mississippi. And then you finish off in Rocky Top against the Tennessee Volunteers in your rivalry game on the 27th. And then I put this in all, every single video. I mention this every single time, but that SEC championship date is there because who knows? Vanderbilt's the team that, I'm not going to lie, I highly, highly, highly doubt that it's going to get to that point where they're contending for the SEC championship. But again, who knows? We've seen crazier things happen. It's March Madness season. We've seen crazy things happen all weekend long. Like Oral Roberts, Loyola Chicago just beats uh, Illinois again. It's It's been a crazy, crazy week full of college sports. So crazier things have happened. Crazier things are ha have happened for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Looking at who Vanderbilt's lost this season, the only guy that I look at as a huge, huge loss for this team is Odie Yingbo. Big guy on the defensive line. How is he going to affect this Vanderbilt pass rush or whatever? The rest, Vanderbilt's pretty much keeping their core of the same team that they had last year. Not many guys are leaving. You got the same core. You're going to have Kenny Seals as your quarterback again, who... He's going to have to show his improvements from last season. Again, he's going to be a key factor. A quarterback for any team is going to be a key factor in how they play. The running back position is very, very interesting. Henry Brooks, you got Marlowe, you got Griffin. Who's going to be the lead back? Because that, that's kind of a hole that's open, kind of a position that you have no clue what could happen for Vanderbilt. Who's going to be that guy? And other than that, like the only other player that really jumps out to me on this team, and I think the best player on this team, as Abdur Rahman, your big wide receiver, I feel like he's the best player on this team. The guy who has the most to show with this season on Vanderbilt. And he needs to have a big season to get 
draft profile or draft prospect talk or whatever you want to call it. So that's kind of what Vanderbilt has right now. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know the most about Vanderbilt. Not a lot of guys know the most about Vanderbilt. So I'm really trying hard to do my research and figure out what is this Vanderbilt team? What are they trying to become and how they'll do this season? Let's take a look at their recruiting class. 13th in the SEC. They beat out my South Carolina Gamecocks. They stole a four-star recruit, and I think that's a huge positive for Clark Lee's first year ever at Vanderbilt. You get the 190th best player in the nation, D-tackle four-star Marcus Bradley, coming out of Maryland. So that's a big pickup there. If you're able to pick up a four-star as Vanderbilt, I think that is a huge improvement, especially going through a coaching change. So I really like that. Some of the other big names you got in here, John Howes, cornerback. You got Teron Suggick, uh, D-tackle. You got Xavier Castillo offensive guard so you're bringing in a decent class again you're at the bottom of the sec but i don't think that there was really expectation to be at the top half of the F uh, sec this season for vanderbilt in terms of recruiting so i think they did a decent job i think for what they got this season vanderbilt did a decent job in recruiting and they didn't come last which i think is a really key piece for vanderbilt let's move on to the most fun part of the videos wins toss-ups and losses who can i say you can mark down as automatic wins for vanderbilt who can I say is a toss-up game, and who can I say is a loss for Vanderbilt? I'll pull that up on the screen right now. So as you see, there is percentages at the bottom. That is representing my win confidence in Vanderbilt going out and being able to win that game. So wins is 100% to 75%. Toss-ups is 74 to 26 And then losses is anywhere between 25 and 0%. Start off with the wins. East Tennessee State, and then you got UConn, two FCS schools. I think that those should be wins for a SEC school, for a Division I school. I'm praying that Vanderbilt wins these games because, yes, Vanderbilt's a division rival for me. I don't have the biggest rivalry against Vanderbilt. I don't, like, hate them as much as I hate Georgia or Tennessee or anything like that. But I think there's a part of me that always wants to see your conference do well. And I think that Vanderbilt should be able to win th these games. I'm going to be cheering for them to win these games. Like, I don't cheer against Vanderbilt just because... They are in our division or whatever. You like to see your division play well. So Vanderbilt, I have them beating East Tennessee State and then UConn toss-up game. I'm going Colorado State, a uh, group of five team, but you're going to, you're going to Colorado. The altitude level is going to change. You're going somewhere where you're not used to playing. I can't remember where in Colorado that is. It's somewhere in Colorado, Colorado State. I forget where they play, but Colorado State isn't a juggernaut there towards the bottom of the Mountain West so I think this is definitely a winnable game for Vanderbilt it just worries me about what is the travel going to be like and how is the playing atmosphere going to affect you in that sense and then losses there are a lot there are a lot of losses and I don't have win confidence 25% or over for any of these games for Vanderbilt so you go starting off with Stanford Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, Mississippi State, Mizzou, Kentucky, Ole Miss, and then Tennessee. I'm going to start off first. I'm just going to talk about the ones that are, I think, are complete write-offs right now. Georgia, Florida, and then Ole Miss. Those ones, in my opinion, are way out of hand. And if you want to split those up even into most likely able to win or, yeah, most likely able to win and then least likely able to win, I think you have Ole Miss, Georgia, and Florida as those least likely games to win. And I think the most likely game you have out of all of these, I'm going to take Kentucky is definitely a winnable game. They played them very well last year, and you have the game at home this year. Tennessee, maybe Tennessee's a struggling program. You do go to Neyland Stadium on that Thanksgiving weekend, so that is going to be a bit tith, tough. Mississippi State, I think that that's not even a write-off win because Mississippi State... Even though they were the worst team, third uh, worst team in the SEC West last year, and one of the worst teams in all the SEC, I still think that they got tons to show and tons to prove. And then Stanford and South Carolina, they Stan, uh, Vanderbilt hasn't beaten South Carolina in what seven years, something like that, seven years and counting. It's been a long, long time since that's happened. And then Stanford, Stanford, they're a middle of the Pac-12 team. Again, the Pac-12 isn't anything special, but it's not a terrible conference, and I still just think Stanford is going to be a very quality team this season and should be good enough to beat Vanderbilt. So, realistic, 
high ceiling and then lowest ceiling. I think the worst this Vanderbilt team could do is one in eleven. Like you're gonna lose one of your one uh, win games. You're gonna lose that toss up game to Colorado State, and you're gonna lose the rest of your losses games. So that is the absolute worst that Vanderbilt could do this season, in my opinion. Highest ceiling, the highest ceiling Vanderbilt could do, in my opinion. I'm gonna go five and seven. You take your two wins. You take your tosses, and then you're able to flip two of those losses, probably against Kentucky and Mississippi State, I'd say. Kentucky, Mississippi State, you go out, you win those two games. You get come up one game short from a bowl game. And it's tough. It's tough to say, but I think that that really is the highest ceiling for Vanderbilt. And if you want to go punching through that season, I think 6-6. Six and six. You beat Mississippi State, Kentucky, and then you steal one versus either Tennessee or South Carolina there. You win your toss-up against Colorado State, and then you go out, you beat Eastern Tennessee, and you beat UConn. Realistic scenario, I'm going to go 3-9. and nine. I'm going to go 3-9 and nine for Vanderbilt. I think that they take their wins. I think that they take the toss-up and then lose their losses, and that's the season. That's Clark Lee's first season taking over at Vanderbilt, which it is a struggling program. They don't have the facilities that other SEC schools have. They don't have the fan base that other SEC schools have. But you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere and build the program up. So that is my predictions, early season predictions for Vanderbilt. And that is my early season predictions all in all for the SEC because Vanderbilt was our last team because we did it in alphabetical order. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning into this whole series. If you have been tuning into this whole series, I really, really appreciate it. Had tons of fun doing it. Like the video, comment down below, subscribe. Thank you for watching and definitely come back next time.